Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you and today I'd like to talk about waves, waves through solids and through liquids and gases, uh, fluids, and the two kinds of waves that pretty much exist, okay? Um, this is the kind of thing that you would think somebody would tell you about in school. Um, I don't recall anybody ever telling me this. If they did, I probably wasn't listening. That happened a lot back then. Um, so let's talk about what what do we mean by waves? Okay, waves are what happens when energy flows through a gas, a liquid, or solid, but the material itself doesn't flow. Now there is such a thing as a traveling wave. We're talking about uh, waves that aren't traveling. Um, so there's a couple of ways we can do this. Let's, if I take this, this is a bottle of fizzy water that I've been working on this morning. Okay, take the lid off. That's a very low frequency because it's a pretty big bottle. If I put some more liquid in it, the frequency would go up. Okay, so what's happening is I'm putting turbulence around the neck of the bottle, and I'm forming a, a standing wave that goes back and forth uh, through the, the length of the bottle, okay? That's a sound wave. That's a pressure wave going through the air. So let me put this over here. I've got uh, basically a pretty nice stick right here. This is a one meter long stick I use for calibrating uh, video uh, images. And there's a couple of ways I can make a wave go through this. Now, one is I can hold it about there and I can, okay, well, the reason I'm holding it there is that's a nodal point for the first mode. And I hit it, I can hear it ring. Okay, it's a very low frequency ring. Now, are there uh, devices that are designed to ring like that? You bet. There's all kinds of musical instruments that, require, that rely on vibrating beams like a xylophone or a marimba or something like that. And they rely on waves that are, tra that are this way through the structure. Okay. Now, I can also take this same structure and I can tap it on the end. Okay. And I can send a wave down the structure. Okay. And this is, a, this is the distinction we want to make. When the wave uh, it makes the structure go back and forth like this, okay? That's a bending wave, okay? The, the, the beam here is actually bending. Now, not much, just a little, okay? If I hold it like this and tap it that way, the, beam, the wave is going down the beam. That is a compressive wave, okay? Sound is a compression, com compressive or compression. Sound is a compression wave, okay? Now, there's a fundamental difference between bending waves and compression waves. And so I'll even write them down here. This is, we'll call one is the bending wave. Okay, and that's if I have a beam here. Okay, and maybe it bends like this, okay? The beam is bending, it's a bending wave. A compression wave, whoops. So if I take that same beam and I tap it right there, you'll see these compression waves go down the beam. Okay? And you can sense it. If you, have a, if you have access to a little accelerometer, get the accelerometer, put it on that end of a beam, be a stick really, tap it on that end and you can listen. The, the accelerometer will feel the, the vibrations. It goes down the beam, bounces back, comes back again. You can actually use that to figure out the speed of sound in the material. Okay, so there's one fundamental difference in how these two behave. Okay, compression wave. Okay, there's probably some better way to say that. Fixed speed of propagation. Okay, compression waves when they go through a structure or a gas or a liquid, the speed is fixed. It's the speed of sound through the material. That's the speed of sound through the material. Speed of sound in air is like 343 meters a second. Uh, speed of sound through water is like 1400 and some thick less than 1500 uh, meters per second. Um, and if you want to know the speed of sound in a uh, solid, it's the square root of E over rho, where E is the elastic modulus and rho is the density. Okay, so there you go. This is the compression wave, fixed, 
fixed uh, speed of propagation, which is the speed of sound in the material. Now, go over here. S speed of propagation is not fixed. It varies. And it varies based on the wavelength, okay? And so, if I take this beam and I suspend it right there, and I put it next to my ear because you can hear it ring. It rings for quite a while if you hold it like that, okay? Look at the uh, chimes, wind chimes and things. It's always, they're always held not on the end, but down here a little ways to try to get that first uh, node line, node line for the first mode. And I can hear it ring for a while. You can't hear it because the microphone won't pick it up, okay? That's a bending wave, and the speed of the sound, speed of the wave propagation through the material depends on the uh, uh, wavelength of the wave. So, the place where you may have heard of this, let's see, I don't want to do this. Oh yeah, they don't call them bending waves and compression waves in the literature. This is called a dispersive wave. And this is called, not too surprisingly, a non-dispersive wave. Okay, so that's the difference in how they behave and, and how they're identified. This is the vocabulary you'll see. There's one thing you may have heard of in sort of the popular literature. Have you ever heard of something called a rogue wave? R-O-G-U-E. A rogue wave out in the ocean. Okay, I'm going to see if I can draw a rogue wave here. I don't know how this is going to go. I haven't tried this yet. Um, if you have a, a waves in the ocean and their speed depends on their wavelength, let's say you have a couple of waves that look like that, okay, and maybe a real big one, okay, and they have amplitude and wavelength. Well, at any one place and at any one time, they uh, are additive, they add, the, the effects add up. And so, a rogue wave, sailors uh, refer to these, they're out in the water, and the water is relatively smooth, there's not a lot of motion, there's not a lot of wave action, the, the, the ocean seems fairly calm, and then out of nowhere, this giant wave just appears out of the water and crashes down over the ship. That's called a rogue wave. Well, the way you get a rogue wave is you have a whole bunch of these waves of all different lengths that are coming from who knows what, whatever, you know, shear forces between the wind and the water, seismic motion, tidal motion, whatever, all these different waves, and they mostly cancel each other out. But because they have different wavelengths and different amplitudes, they don't always cancel out everywhere. Once in a while, they all, uh, the phase angles all add up, and they all add up at the same place at the same time. Once in a very long while, there's a ship there. That's called a rogue wave. And you get rogue, rogue waves because waves in water are dispersive. Their uh, uh, speed of propagation depends on their wavelength. So there you have it. The two kinds of waves are compression waves and bending waves, pretty much. Now, waves through water aren't really bending waves, but they are still dispersive. So the, 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 the terminology you'll see in the literature is a dispersive wave and a non-dispersive wave. Compression waves are non-dispersive. That's basically speed of sound. Uh, everything else you can consider a dispersive wave. So there you go. I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you next time.